thanks for coming out early. I want to give like a little brief overview. The most challenging thing for me today is going to be <laughs> to keep this brief because movement is a broad topic and there's a lot to cover. Um, but what I'd like to do at this time today is to, I want to start by asking you a couple questions and like get some gauge and feedback for where we're at with how we feel about movement this morning. <laughs> and then go into like a little bit of story time from me, sharing a few thoughts on movement, and then we'll do some experiential. We'll, we'll gauge that out, but we will be playing with movement a little bit too, because we can't just talk about movement, right? First question I wanna ask is when I say movement, and if you wouldn't mind just no filter, like the no filter game where you say the first thing that comes into your head no matter what it is, um, when I say movement, say the first word that comes to mind. Action. Gotta do it. Dancing wave. Did I hear? Nice. Okay, I couldn't, those are the three I could hear. Um, that's fine. There's a lot of you. Speak more loudly, but yes. So already a variety, right? And how about when I say this phrase, what moves you? What was the first word that comes to mind? Ooh, music. Breath. Movies? Movies. Waves. <laughs> Perfect. She's got a water wavelength. Movies. Art. Mo movies. Art. Right? Okay. So we're getting there. We're getting somewhere. And then, last question. What is moving in you right now? Blood. Blood. What was that one? Coffee. <laughs> Energy. Energy. Yes. Yes. Okay. That's, I'm done. <laughs> you already covered everything I'm going to say. So movement is, it's everything, right? I mean, my little prompt was, what isn't movement? Um, and I, I mean, I would actually challenge anyone to come up with something. I would love to know what isn't, because I can't think of anything um, in our universe that's not movement on some level. Okay, <laughs> so it's a, obviously very broad, so it's important to look at because it's part of being alive. Um, I will just share a couple hopefully related stories that I thought of about, about movement that were surprising to me. So obviously, I'm a ballet dancer by profession, um, and so that's the movement as dance ties in there. Um, what that has meant for me in discovering more about movement is that for the whole first, at least, no, more than half, like two thirds of my life, my idea of movement was based on an externalized performance, evaluation, critique. What do you think about my movement? How can I make my movement pleasing? Um, how can I make it fit into a context, right? So that I could have success in what I did. Um, and what happened for me over time is that, well, one, when I started dancing and moving in that way, that unlocked a lot of things inside of me, gave me access to connection with others, within myself, to music. I was able to process things that maybe outside of dance I wasn't, which is what made me fall in love with moving in that way. Um, but over time, as I had more life experiences, more deep things to process and feel, what I noticed is that this externalization of my idea of movement and myself led to a disconnection within myself. And that was painful, and that left me feeling a bit lost with how to move through my life. Um, and so, the thing that had sort of brought me to life and into connection and into understanding of my own movement sort of flipped and turned into something that I could no longer access, that like aliveness. Um, and like most people, I think, in, in life when we have this sort of like flip in our path that's uncomfortable, sometimes it leads us to exploring. Um, I, I want to, Oh, the, the thing that was up here before, I'll just refer to it. It was like a painting of nature, right? It was a, a path that went through. It was a path. It was a path. Oh, that's not it. That's the path of you dancing. <laughs> there, yeah. So 
movement in connection to our natural world has cycles, right? So plants, trees, just everything that's alive also dies. So there's our natural rhythms and cycles, which we have inside of us too, include that. So I think that that sort of switch in a path is like a death. It's like a slowing down and a reassessing so that we can grow again and again and again. I think the point of that is that when we are connected and observing our natural world more, we can have less judgment about how we mirror these cycles, right? We, I'm just gonna go all over the place because I speak better when I do it that way. <laughs> um, but we live in a world right now that's very product focused, that's very production focused. So we lean into how can I make something? How can I do something? How can I keep moving forward? How can I keep generating this energy? And I th even think about music, right? And there has to be arcs and there has to be rest. And you can't just be like, yeah, 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 all the time. At, at some point, the best point when you're at a club is when it goes, when it drops, right? And then everyone's like, Oh, and it comes back in. So we need, we need those pauses. We need those breaths. Um, and so these interruptions and these slowing downs, I think, are really important in our world. The, the place I wanted to go with that part of the story is that that discomfort and that disconnect from what I knew led me to want to understand how to feel more connected, period. Um, and I think that starts on the inside. So I think I might pause here and, and do a little bit of an experiential, how can we connect on the inside instead of the outside? So here's your cue. We're going to start by sitting down. I'm going to walk you through coming inside just a little bit and just seeing what's, what's moving in you right now. We'll start slow. And then I'm going to invite you to get up and I'm going to talk you through walking and just paying attention to what your feet are doing, playing with the rhythm of accelerating, slowing down, looking at each other. That's what we're going to do. Okay. All right. And this is going to be an exercise in different forms of connection through movement. Okay. So First of all, any wiggles, we've been kind of sedentary, right? Sitting or even just standing, just whatever. We're not looking at each other. This is not a performance. First of all, start by just feeling the ground under your feet. So there is maybe a little bit of pressure, maybe a lot if you're standing. Tune into the sensation of that support that's there. If you're sitting down, you're gonna feel some support under your seat <laughs> um, and just gently like drop your attention into these spaces just let yourself come into this moment not moving outward with your attention but moving in and the next thing I would invite you to would be just to track your breath so you're not controlling it you're not doing anything with it just follow and watch what happens when you breathe in and you breathe out and what moves in you like what does your breath move just follow that like curiously just for a few cycles of breath stay with it And now take that attention and let it kind of flow through the inside of your body. So you could start with the feet. It might come up your legs, your quads, your pelvis area. Just let it kind of flow like water and see if it lands anywhere or if anything is asking for your attention in your body. And when you find that, it might be something that's uncomfortable. It might be a neutral feeling. It can be anything. Just stay with that. Just observing. Now see 
if you can bring in that breath and attach it to that spot. And just notice, you're just a witness here. Just notice if it changes, if it doesn't, if it says anything. Yep, there might be some movement in there. I see some of that, that's good. Just allow whatever's in there to happen. If it wants to move. And then release your attention, gently. <laughs> and kind of bring your eyes back Yep, and when you bring your eyes back, let them land on one thing. One thing in the room, and soft gaze, just take in whatever that thing is. So in your mind, name it. Shiny, silver, smooth, catalog what you're seeing. And slowly move your eyes, slowly, like molasses around the room a little bit. Just see where you are, where you've landed. Okay, and just let that go. Thank you. Okay, how was that? <laughs> nice. <laughs> Is there a shift? at all in anyone from before we did that exercise and after? Yes, maybe. Any words? Yeah, when my, my neck is less stiff is what I heard. That's awesome. The thing that we just did <laughs> is a couple things pulled from like an embodiment practice, which just means I'm a body <laughs> and I live in this body and I'm just going to like honor that and pay attention, right? And, and move with what is happening in me. So it's like an intuitive movement, even though we didn't move too much. Um, and then the thing that we did when we opened our eyes and also with our breath is a grounding exercise, right? So it's just to bring us into this present moment and into the unfolding of what's happening right now. Because, thank you for saying about the neck tension, what happens in us when we're controlling our movement, when we feel cont overly contained um, or overly controlled, is that we get, we get this pain, we get this dis-ease going on in our bodies. And so, for me, these practices are so important to bring us back to like a baseline of health and of utilizing movement, which is the whole point of what I wanted to talk about today, utilizing movement for regeneration and resetting and bringing about balance for what is imbalanced in our, in our world, in our bodies. Movement is a powerful teacher in that way. I go into like story time a little bit. So I hate flying. Um, like I really hate it. Like I'm that lady who, when there's like a bump, she may scream. <laughs> She may be the one that causes the whole plane to be like, are we going down? Because I just, I really, I really don't like it. Um, and it's gotten worse and worse as I've gotten older and the more that I've flown, which sucks because like exposure therapy would tell me like, <laughs> you should be better at this by now. Um, and so, you know, I started like, I obviously am like versed in these practices of like grounding and like bringing myself <laughs> present moment and it only has made it worse most of the time so I just started like looking different places for help like I can't have to fly it's part of our world um, and the diagnosis that I ended up getting from this really old guy who like psychoanalyzed me in like five minutes like my whole life like my relationship with my mom and <laughs> everything that makes me who I am I was like wow you're good um, was like a form of claustrophobia. So it was wild because I was not expecting that. But basically my bodily like reaction and fear to flying was because I had nowhere to go. <laughs> and so it's, it's a feeling of like out of control in a way that is 
ironically enough for me as like someone whose whole life is about movement, that I can only move so much, right? And I can't move out of a situation that I don't like. Um, which I kind of think is a perfect metaphor for this and you know how important movement is and understanding it in different ways and knowing how to use, utilize it. What I've noticed is that when I go with this movement on the plane that terrifies me, like turbulence, like I actually experienced this in the last month, when I actually can feel my body rocking and I'm like, oh, my body's rocking. And it's funny that you said wave and I'm like, oh, this is like being on a boat. It is relieving to me to just go with the movement and let go of trying to effing control everything. <laughs> and so that's my, that's my story about uh, a very uncomfortable story about coming into like, oh, Letting movement happen, it, you know, it is helpful. Go with the flow, yeah. So, I mean, the reason I wanted to practice some of these things with you is because I don't know about for you, but even for me as someone who moves every day like a lot for their job, this is not built in to my day, right? Like I don't stop and breathe and go inside and my neck gets tighter as I move <laughs> usually. And so this is like just, I think a really important and really simple practice to have for all the challenges we face. Um, yeah, stuck, stuckness. So that, that story of like me getting that diagnosis of claustrophobia, for me it made a lot of things make sense about what's happening in our world and what's happening in our lives around movement right now, right? So, well, right now, thank you for choosing this space because we're, we're almost outside having this big open space, but a lot of the spaces that we live in and function in aren't like this, right? They're, they're small, they're cramped, we feel, we feel everybody's energy, we feel like boxed in. We have these boxes that we live in and we work in, and that's not conducive to this feeling <laughs> that's not conducive to kind of our natural state of moving through things. Um, and so I do think that we have a lot of things that lend themselves to us feeling stuck. Um, and one thing I'll say about that, so I, I have these different weird little wheelhouses. So yes, I'm a ballet dancer. I'm also a certified, in, this is so hard to say, a certified integrative somatic therapy practitioner. And so that's also part of what we do with embodiment. So I literally like know how to help move through stuckness. Um, and I'm an internal martial artist. And so I will be taking over a program in town that is an internal martial arts program. And that's rooted in Chinese medicine. And the my little spiel about how Chinese medicine or Eastern medicine looks at bodies as opposed to Western medicine is that it's about energy, right? So when we look at a person, we look at where there's stagnation of energy or where there's excess, right? So it's literally like, movement <laughs> again. So how, how is your energy moving through your body? Is it stuck in some places or is it spilling out in some places? Um, and so wh when it's stuck, that creates illness and disease. That's just what we know. And when you look at it that way, you can see the importance of understanding movement for yourself, understanding how to move energy in yourself. It literally is your health and your life livelihood. Um, and in the same token, when we're performing <laughs> and we're giving and we're giving, we, you know, we have different personality types, we're losing life energy. So I'm trying to, what I'm trying to paint and illustrate with all of these examples today is that the movement within us is literally within our control. Like, like everything that's happening in us, the information's available. And we're a little bit programmed to think that we need someone else to tell us, like I said with my career, that looks good. You're healthy, <laughs> you know, like all these things. And we do need help sometimes, but it's, it's already available. That information is available when we slow down and tune into it. So what we've gone over, Movement's everything, right? Emotions, how are emotions movement? Emotions are 
chemicals and hormones moving through your body, literally. That's what makes you sad, happy, angry, all of those things. Thoughts, when we get into like a thought loop or whatever, or when our mind is blank, that's electricity moving through neurons in your brain, movement. Um, sensation is based on movement of sound waves coming into your ears, whatever. I, I mean, what am I doing? I'm just <laughs> telling you that movement is everything. But connection with each other is an interesting thing to think about and explore with movement. So that other song <laughs> that I told you about this morning, I want to have him play it first, and then we're going to talk about that. So this is something that happens a lot in music, and I just want to talk about like what this what this is. Do you know the tagline from the song? Like what he's gonna say? <laughs> See, it's happening. <laughs> Heads are going like this. When I move, you move. Thank you, Ludacris. Those are mirror neurons. <laughs> so when we're babies and we come out and we're learning how to be in the world, if you have a little baby in front of you and you go, that you're, you're mirroring everything that's happening in them. That's how we learn how to be a human. And we need this. We need mirroring always as like in our existence as people. And so we love dancing together. We love feeling things with music together because there's this like map for when I move, you move just like that. When you go to a, another rap concert and they say, hey, ho, and everyone starts, hey, it feels good, right? And it's because we're... We're connected. We're wired for connection. So <laughs> that being the case, I think this, this leads us into another scarier, maybe experiential thing. But we won't get, we won't get too deep with it. I mean, I want to go into a full dance party. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but not everyone is down with that. So we'll, we'll go gently into it. But essentially, we talk about all these concepts, right? Which is my challenge in balancing this and, and bringing it to life here today. So we talk about a lot of concepts. We don't realize sometimes that we need to be embodied in these concepts too. So we know that mirror neurons are there. We know that we have this need to mirror each other. But are we paying attention to how we're doing that in our day, right? Like, I'm reading your body language. Am I reading my body language? Do you see what I'm doing right now? I have this huge, <laughs> I am literally trying to, like, hold everybody's attention. And I'm in this giant, like, tripod stance. And so we can track our own bodies at any moment, too, to know what we need, to know how we feel, like, do I want to get up and move because you told me to move? So before we go into this, next little exercise with music, which is, I think, going to be our last thing that we'll do because we don't have a ton of time. But um, don't do it if you don't want to do it. Like, please start with listening to w yourself. Like, do that little, go inside. I don't want to get up. I do want to get up. And then it might change. So let's have this be an exercise in that too, in listening to your own desire. And we're going to play some music. And we're going to work on some mirror, <laughs> some mirror neuroning. So I will talk you through it as it goes. Yeah. OK. So if it feels comfortable to you, I invite you to get up out of your seat slowly. Again, let's start with. Let's start with walking. Just walking. That's it. Like, just nothing controlled. I mean, I've been si you, you've been sitting for a second. You might have some kind of shoulder thing. You might have something that needs to stretch. But just feel what it feels like to walk. How much do we walk every day? A lot. But what part of your foot hits the floor first? How do your hips move when you walk? Where do your eyes want? Walking. Just pay attention to who you are as a person walking through the world. <laughs> okay. And what happens if you connect to the music? Right? Is there a bounce? Do you move faster? How do you take a place? Okay. 
And the next cue, feeling yourself, the next cue is the scary part. Notice the people around you. <laughs> what happens when you connect with someone? Do you want to? Do you feel shy and your eyes want to go down? What is your body telling you about this moment? What you want, what you need through this movement practice? Just let that happen. Going. What are your hands doing? How does your back feel as you connect to someone or see someone doing something? Very free. Is there a spot in the room that you want to stop at? Feels better to you? Or stay where you are, actually. You can sit, you can be wherever your body wants to be. You don't have to come back and sit down. <sighs> okay, so just notice how you feel now for yourself um, and what you took away from that. I, this, I just wrote this little like poetic phrase. <laughs> it was waxing poetic here. So to remember that life is movement is ultimately to recognize our interconnectedness to witness our own aliveness unfolding and the aliveness unfolding in others as well in neutrality and even awe is one of the most tangible forms of compassion and subversion that we can engage in. Thank you.